Okay, the first shape that we're gonna talk about today is a parallelogram. And as you can see from the name, one of the first things about a parallelogram is that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So that means that these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. And word to the wise, whenever you're told things are parallel, you want to be on the lookout that when you start cutting things by transversals in the disguise of diagonals, you're going to wind up with alternate interior angles, uh, corresponding angles, things like that. So keep that in mind. Okay, the second property of parallelograms is that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So not only are they parallel to each other, they are also congruent to each other. So that's congruent to that, and that's congruent to that. Next up, we have that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So these two are congruent, and these two are congruent. Next, we have that. The diagonals of a parallelogram are not necessarily congruent. So you can see from the picture here that this diagonal is definitely longer than this diagonal. Now, if your parallelogram happens to be a rhombus or a square, then that changes. Then your diagonals are congruent. But just the parallelogram, we do not know diagonals are congruent. But we do know that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, which means those are congruent and those are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary, equaling 180. So this angle plus this angle equals 180. This angle plus this angle equals 180, so on and so forth. Okay, this would be a great time for a screenshot. Okay. So here we have a fairly poorly drawn rectangle, but you get the idea. All right, so rectangles are a more specific kind of parallelogram. So all of the things that apply to parallelograms apply to rectangles, plus we get some new information. So let's zip through the ones that are the same. So first, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel and both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, just like before. Now, this time, all four angles measure 90 degrees. Therefore, all four angles are the same. We also know that because our angles are all the same this time, our diagonals in a rectangle are congruent and they still bisect each other. So there's our information about rectangles. Everything we knew about parallelograms plus some more information. And if you wanted to take a screenshot, this would be a good time to do it. Next up is a rhombus. And a rhombus is an even more specific rectangle, which is an even more specific parallelogram. So what are the properties of a rhombus? Well, let's start with the same ones we had with parallelogram and rectangle. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, but this time all four sides are congruent. We also know that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. And we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. So just like in a parallelogram, any two angles in a row add up to 180. We also know that just like in a parallelogram, diagonals are not congruent. So are we sensing a theme here? When everything is at right angles, we have diagonals being congruent. When everything looks like you sat on the figure, then diagonals are not congruent. But just like with the parallelogram, Diagonals do bisect each other. And here's some new information. Diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular to each other. And diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So these angles equal each other as do these. And these angles equal each other as do these. So there's your information about a rhombus. This is a great time for a screenshot. Now let's take a look at squares. Here we have square, and again, we're going to find a lot of properties that are similar to a rhombus and a lot of properties that are similar to a rectangle and a quadrilateral. So let's lay those out. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and all four sides are congruent, just like a rhombus, and all angles measure 90 degrees. This time, diagonals are congruent, and all the same information about diagonals in a rhombus are true. So the diagonals bisect each other, they are perpendicular to each other, and they bisect the opposite angles. This is a good place to take a screenshot. And next up, the trapezoid. 
Okay, so a trapezoid contains one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Then we also know that angles along the same leg sum to 180. So these are called bases. These are called legs. So the angles along the same leg add up to 180. So these two are supplementary and these two are supplementary, making it so that when we add all four of them together, we still get our 360 degrees within a four-sided figure. And while we're at it, because trapezoids are weird, let's just give you the area formula for a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is one half base one plus base two times the height. Now, there is a more specific kind of trapezoid, and it is called an isosceles trapezoid. And the difference between a trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid is in addition to having one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, we now also have that the legs are congruent. And that means that there are two pairs of congruent angles. And we also know that the diagonals of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. So finally, let's take a look at kites. So for kites, we have no pairs of parallel sides. We do have two pairs of congruent adjacent sides. Adjacent means in a row. So we can see that those two are congruent and those two are congruent, adjacent. One side next to another and then one side next to another. We also know that exactly one diagonal is the perpendicular bisector of the other. So let's draw our diagonals. So you can see that they're perpendicular. And then you can see that this one is not bisected, but this one is. And the diagonal that is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal also bisects those angles. So these are congruent and these are congruent. And finally, the what are called the non-vertex angles. So these right here are called the vertex angles. These over here are the non-vertex angles, the place where the two sides that are not congruent meet. The non-vertex angles are congruent. So that angle is congruent to that angle. And this would be a great place for a screenshot. So let's end with just a little description of how these guys kind of fit together. So quadrilateral is the larger category. That's any four-sided figure. Then they can be subdivided into those that are parallelograms and those that are not parallelograms. In the not parallelogram category, we have kites and trapezoids, and a trapezoid can also be further defined as an isosceles trapezoid. When we look at parallelograms, they can be further defined as rectangle if all four angles are 90 degrees, or rhombuses if all four sides are equal, or squares if all four sides are equal and all angles are 90 degrees. So a square is a rhombus and a rectangle and a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram. All of these guys are quadrilaterals. This is the, uh, the way these guys fit into subcategories. Screenshot. Okay, well, that is a lot of information, but that should really get you started on understanding quadrilaterals, the differences among them, and then all the tools you have in your toolbox as you begin to do proofs with them. So take a look at this again, make those screenshots, print them out, start working with this stuff. Take a look at some of these videos um, to take a look at working with proofs uh, and consider subscribing to my channel so that you know when I put out a new video so that we can keep on mathing.